non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are agents that block cyclooxygenase. Cyclooxygenase is a specific enzyme which produce from arachidonic acid various prostanoids. Prostanoids are biologically active substances, as thromboxanes, prostaglandins, and prostacyclines. But we have two types of COX enzyme. COX-1 enzyme protects stomach, provides aggregation of thrombocytes, and also it provides kidney perfusion. COX-2 enzyme participates in inflammation, but also it provides kidney perfusion. So, to explain the difference between non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, we have to know the sites of action of COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. Initially, we have arachidonic acid, and from arachidonic acid, COX-1 enzyme and COX-2 enzyme makes various prostanoids. First of all, COX-1 enzyme produces thromboxane A2. Thromboxane A2 provides aggregation of thrombocytes, which is essential step in primary hemostasis. Also, COX-1 enzyme produces prostaglandin E2. Prostaglandin E2 stimulates mucus secretion in stomach mucosa. And we need mucus to protect stomach mucosa from hydrochloric acid. So, prostaglandin E2 provides gastric mucosa protection. In addition to this, prostaglandin E2 combined with prostaglandin I2 from COX-2 enzyme induce vasodilation of renal afferent arterial. And by vasodilation of afferent vessel, they maintain normal blood perfusion of the glomerulus. And it's absolutely crucial for the glomerulus. So basically, prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin I2 provide kidneys protection. COX-2 enzyme produce prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin D2. Both these metabolites create pro-inflammatory state. They increase vascular permeability, they increase pain sensation, and they also create edema in tissues. And if we want to decrease the severity of inflammation, we can prescribe non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The first option is to inhibit every COX enzyme, and such effect is provided by non-selective NSAIDs. It's aspirin, ibuprofen, ketoprofen, and diclofenac. By inhibition of COX-1 enzyme, they decrease the production of thromboxin A2. With decreasing thromboxin A2, aggregation decreases, and we can analyze this by prolongation of the bleeding time. The positive effect is that this will cause decrease in the rate of clot formation, and we can use this for prophylaxis of thrombosis. Also, with blockage of COX-1 enzyme, the production of prostaglandin E2 decreases, and as a result, mucus secretion will decrease. The problem is that with decrease in mucus secretion, the protection against hydrochloric acid decreases. So now stomach will become more vulnerable to hydrochloric acid, and this will significantly increase the risk of gastric ulcers. And to prevent this, we usually prescribe PPIs. With inhibition of both COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes, the vasodilation of renal afferent arterial decreases. This will cause decrease in the volume of blood that will income to the glomerulus. And it creates a huge problem because glomerulus cannot work without sufficient income of blood. So kidney's protection becomes compromised, and this can cause decrease in glomerular filtration rate with ischemic injury. The blockage of COX-2 enzyme also causes decrease in production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. As a result, vascular permeability decreases, pain sensation decreases, and edema decreases. And this anti-inflammatory effect that will also decrease pain sensation is the reason why we prescribe NSAIDs. But as we see, we have some serious side effects. For example, the risk of bleeding increase, the risk of gastric ulceration increase, and also we cannot use non-selective NSAIDs in patients with kidney injury. So, to avoid these side effects, we developed selective COX-2 inhibitors. 
as selecoxib, atericoxib, and paricoxib. These drugs block only COX-2 enzyme. Because COX-2 enzyme involved in kidneys protection, blockage of COX-2 enzyme decreases vasodilation of upper interterial, and thereby it will compromise glomerulus perfusion. So, kidneys protection will decrease, but the positive aspect is that COX-1 enzyme remains intact. As a result, the risk of potential kidney injury is significantly smaller compared to non-selective NSAIDs. Blockage of COX-2 enzyme causes decrease in production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. This causes decrease in vascular permeability, this will decrease pain sensation, and also it will decrease edema. So, these drugs also possess anti-inflammatory properties and also they can reduce pain sensation. The major difference between selective and non-selective NSAIDs is that COX-1 remains intact. As a result, the risk of kidney injury is milder, the protection of gastric mucosa remains non-affected, so they do not increase the risk of gastric ulcers, and also they do not affect aggregation, so they will not increase the risk of bleeding but also, we cannot use them for prophylaxis of thrombosis. NSAIDs also can be divided in classes. To non-selective NSAIDs belong salicylates as aspirin, paraaminophenol derivatives as acetaminophen. Also interesting that usually we compare the effect of other NSAIDs to aspirin. For example, acetaminophen has the same potency in terms of analgesic effect and lowering body temperature, but it has less potent anti-inflammatory effect. We have acetic acid derivatives as indomethacin, which is significantly more potent agent compared to aspirin. Also we have feminates as ketorolac, and we have to know that it's a good drug to lower body temperature but it's not effective as anti-inflammatory agent. Also, to this class belong diclofenac, and it's very potent agent, but this drug has a lot of side effects. The next class is propionic acid derivatives, as ibuprofen and naproxen. And the last class of non-selective NSAIDs is anolic acid derivatives, as peroxicum and meloxicum. And we have to know that these two drugs have lower risk of side effects compared to entire non-selective anti-inflammatory agents. To selective COX-2 inhibitors belong celecoxib and valdecoxib. And we have to know that patients on selective COX-2 inhibitors have higher risk of heart attack and stroke because selective COX-2 inhibitors do not affect the function of COX-1 enzyme so they do not affect platelets, and because of this, they do not affect aggregation.